Welcome everyone to another weekly edition of our Stay Smart newsletter and podcast brought to you by Vicinity Corporate Housing, where we try to keep you updated on what we see happening in corporate housing, relocation, business travel, hospitality, anything that we think might be relevant to you and to your company. Coming to you from a, a cloudy Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I've been here for the uh, CHPA Small Staff Forum. It's been beautiful weather the last few days. Uh, it's been a great event. Really enjoy um, spending my time with CHPA friends and colleagues. Uh, had some good educational sessions this week. Um, if you'd like to learn any more about CHPA, the organization, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions for you. So feel free to reach out to me. This week we have some good information. Um, the first one is actually about uh, short-term rental regulations in Canada. Last week we talked about the regulations that were um, proposed in British Columbia. Now this article talks about uh, Ontario, the province of Ontario that includes Toronto, looking at the short-term rental regulations um, and making changes to that. Currently in Ontario, uh, short-term rentals are classified as anything less than 28 days. Um, they're looking obviously to increase that. And I think that's interesting to our industry. Corporate housing, we are typically 30 days or longer, month to month is the business model. Um, so this would affect you know, the cor corporate housing industry uh, in particular. So I think it's interesting to see. I think you know, w a lot of proponents of these regulations are because of affordable housing. They're looking at making changes to address affordable housing, which is an issue in Canada and in the US globally affordable housing is an issue. I'm not sure this is the solution, but I think we'll continue to see short-term rental regulations as people are trying to address affordable housing. So it's something that we'll continue to talk about and look at in our newsletters and podcasts in the coming weeks. And the next article is uh, comes from, from Scotland. It's actually in an apartment hotel. It's a conversion of a building into a 72 room, all electric apartment hotel that's gonna be carbon neutral, net zero, uh, carbon operations. I think it's interesting because I think in, in general the extended stay segment, the service apartment segment has, has lagged a little bit the overall hospitality segment in sustainability in going you know, net zero operations like this. So I think this is interesting. Um, obviously I think this is you know a little bit centric to Europe. I think we see the you know environmental concerns a little bit more importantly there. Um, so it's interesting to see this uh, net zero apart hotel. And then the next article is about um, travel buyer survey that GPTA did and looking at, uh, you know, for 2024, uh, some key takeaways from this, 67% uh, of travel buyers um, anticipate increased budgets for 2024 for their travel buying. Um, I think that's interesting. Um, you know, we've looked a lot at 2023's numbers there in the US at least have surpassed 2019 numbers. So I think globally we'll see 2024, the numbers surpass 2019. And then cost, man, you know, cost management tools are still really important for travel buyers in this survey. And then only 34% of travel buyers were looking to implement AI into their uh, travel buying software. I thought that was interesting. I thought that number would be a little bit higher. Um, and then also in the survey, they kind of broke it out into regions. And I thought it was interesting to see, I think it was 54% of European travel buyers were looking at sustainability or vital environmental issues in their travel buying, um, which was much higher than other parts of the world. So obviously we see kind of sustainability environmental concerns a little bit more uh, prevalent in, in Europe than in other parts of the country or uh, other parts of the world. Um, and then lastly, uh, an article about leisure travel, the, the outlook for leisure travel in 2024. Um, obviously the, the economy is a little uncertain next year, um, but the leisure travel segment or travel in general, uh, it seems to be positioned well, um, even if there is a little bit of a slowdown in the economic outlook next year. Next year. So I think that's interesting to see. Um, and we, we talk about mostly about business travel on this podcast, but I think leisure travel obviously plays into the cost of travel in general. So that's a little why we included this uh, article in the newsletter this, this week. Those are the articles that we have this week. If there's anything else that you would like to hear about, um, Obviously, anything that you'd like to see on this newsletter, or if you'd like to learn anything else about corporate housing, corporate housing industry in general, or CHBA, I'd be happy to answer those. So feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my contact information is there. You can leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter or podcast, go ahead and do that now. So that's what I see transitioning this week. Take care, everyone.